Online classes have always been a great date night adventure, but most in-person classes are canceled right now. And that's where Chef Fox Live comes to the rescue, offering classes from Seattle's best chefs that you can do right in your own kitchen. Yeah, well, today we are learning how to make shrimp po'boys. Yes, shrimp po'boys. I'm a little bit excited about that from Sam Minkoff and Chef Matt Lewis. So why are we doing po'boys right now? Because it, one, it's simple, it's delicious. It's like, it's the one thing I watch people eat on the truck and it's consistent. It's one of those things that people come and they're like, I was gonna come and try the shrimp and grits today, but I have to get my shrimp po' boy. Right? Yep. It's the one thing when I go to New Orleans, I always have to get. Okay. Um, and it's it's just, it just is nostalgic for me. Awesome. I think that's more than anything. It's one of those things that when I eat it, I, I have so many great memories, you sure. know, growing up in New Orleans and everything else. So it's like, I wanna share that. Like, And the only way to do that is through food, right? It's yes. like, music and food will take you to a time and place yep. in your life where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm right back there, running down the street. We've got that Leidenheimer be bread in the oven that's flown in straight from New Orleans. Yes. When we're thinking about a good po' boy, obviously a good bread is critical. It's critical. It's the vehicle to get all of the beautiful ingredients to your mouth. That's right. And that's the key. And I think if you guys come to the truck and you try it, you'll see the difference. Okay, it's after bread, meal meal. what will we say is the next biggest thing that needs to go in there? The seafood. 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 Like a classic po' boy would be that shrimp, that oyster. Mm. Uh, we can go to roast beef, there's right. hot sausage, but the two classics would be the shrimp and the, and the oyster for me. Yep. You've got some beautiful shrimp. It looks like it's it's already been marinating in something. What is that exactly? So yeah, so what we like to do is marinate in uh, buttermilk, of course and then a, a few different little uh, spices. So the Creole spice and all that, which you can see the red tinge to that. So we let them soak in that uh, buttermilk for at least, I would say, an hour is probably enough. Overnight works as well. Okay. Um, and once we soak them in there, then we bring them to our breading mixture, which is, uh, again, uh, cornmeal, flour, and a couple of other secret ingredients. So we'll put a little bit of that in the bowl. For, Mm. We'll take the shrimp. I'm using a gloved hand so I can get as much moisture off of these shrimp now because they've already marinated. And these shrimp we bring up from New Orleans. They come straight up from the Gulf because it's hard to find uh, shrimp that are better than the Gulf shrimp right there. So we, a little bit more breading there. We're going to toss, toss, toss. Now, do you make this breading by hand for the truck? We do. Pretty much everything on the truck we make by hand. The smells, the smells coming out of this kitchen right now, even before we've hit the fryer, are just incredible. Well, the bread, the bread smells so good, and then the bread is toasting. Oh. I'm gonna grab that in a second, but okay. I'm gonna get these into the hot oil. And that's what you want immediately. You wanna see the bubbles coming up on that. I'm gonna turn our temp up just a touch. All right. Okay. Yeah, and look at this, it's coming up to a really nice boil. So, and it looks like at home, anybody with just a large saucepan or a large pot and oil yep. can kind of do something like that. So a this. couple of pro tips, yes, for uh, anybody frying at home yeah. is a uh, tall sided pot. The reason being is as the oil, um, as the, the meat or the cooks in the oil, yep. the oil will start to bubble up. Okay. And so if you bring the oil all the way to the top of the pan and then drop something in it, right. you're going to boil over. And if you're on you know, gas or electric, you're going to then have a fire. You yep. have light fire. And Nobody so likes fire. outside. No. Nope. Take a look at these. I mean, they're getting a really nice fry on them so oh, far. Yeah. So we're going to pull these out. Okay. Here we right. go. We got these nice breaded oh. shrimp for you guys right there. I can't wait. And the color, that beautiful pink color kind of shining through on those shrimp. And then here we have a variety of kind of typical po' boy toppings. So yes. is this kind of the standard accoutrement for po' boy this that we're looking at? This is the standard accoutrement. Uh, the mayo, or we call it the aioli because we fancy like that. You have the lettuce, the tomato, and the pickle, right? And those are the key ingredients to make a classic po' boy. Back in the day uh, when it was the strikes for the streetcar strikes, um, people were protesting and of course, New Orleans being New Orleans, it had a, uh, the strike breakers, I guess you'd call them, which were the people that came to try and force people back to work. Well, mm -hmm. of course, New Orleans being the community that it is, they all band together and there was one store that um, made sandwiches and what they would do is take the uh, leftovers, whatever meat they had sliced at the deli, everything else on that, um, and they would make sandwiches at the end of the day with it, right? So 
it would, you know, whatever meat. It could be ham. It could be shrimp. You know, most of them right. don't have leftover shrimp because right. of food cost, even back then. Uh, but then they would make these sandwiches, slice them up, and then they would hand them out to all the people on strike, and they'd say, "Here you go, poor boy," or "Poor boy." Is ah. what it was, right? Because everybody's striking. Sure. And, you know, nobody's making money at that point. Yep. And so they would say, here you are, pole boy. Here's a sandwich. We're with you until this is over. I and had so no that's, idea. And so that's how pole boy, or poor, poor, it was poor, poor boy. Right. Uh, got its name in the beginning. And so now, of course, we always truncate everything in New Orleans. Yes. And it's now pole boy, P-O-B-O-Y. I love pickles. I'm going to throw a couple extra on there. So what do we have? We have... The aioli, we have the lettuce. Lettuce. We have the tomato, and we have the pickle, Oof. the Leidenheimer bread, and we have the fried shrimp. If you could smell the right smells there. coming out of this kitchen. Hold that up to you Look guys. at that. Woohoo! Enjoy, enjoy. Very enjoy. proud. Well, please join us on Chef Box Live if you're at home wondering what to do. We've been having so much fun with these cooking experiences. You might not be able to smell what we're making right this moment, but if you join us for Chef Box Live, we like to claim that we've invented smell vision <laughs> together. Yes. Because you will be cooking this exact same thing right alongside us. So mm. I say to you, sir, cheers. 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 And to everyone at home. And cheers to you guys. Enjoy. Come cook with us. This is so good. All right, we gotta take a bite. Let's gotta take it. Mmm. Wow. Okay, Terry, we gotta learn how to make that. Oh yeah, it looked it, delicious. It looks amazing. Have you ever taken a cooking class? No, I've never taken a cooking class, but I took home ec all through junior high and high school so I could figure out how to cook because I like to eat. Smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> how about you? Have you ever taken one? Yeah, I've taken a couple with my husband. We we learned how to make these scallops, these rosemary scallops at one class. And then in another, we learned how to make Tom Ka Gai soup. It's a Thai soup. So good and so romantic. And it's just, I don't know, it shakes up your routine as a couple. So I'd highly recommend them.